the problem of asking the last chair is you find all your questions have been asked before. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I've been looking at your CV, uh, Honorable Mdavadi. You, you were a minister in 1989. Uh, that time I was three years old. Uh, you were minister for supplies, marketing, minister for finance, agriculture, information, transport, vice president. In fact, I remember vividly when you are the vice president, you presented a check to me to go to Stare, presented by uh, Kenyans living in U.S. And now I'm um, serving my second term in parliament. I'm here waiting you for a position that is still mesmerizing Kenyans. Does it portray you as a man who lacks ambition or is it lack of option? Because you are going to be in a position head of a cabinet. Kenya is an ambitious nation in the community of nations. We want to portray as an ambitious man who is as the head of the cabinet, the head of hell. Look at this history that th spread in 30 years. Does it portray you as a man who does not have ambition? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, I want to ask you a very back home that um, in the previous parliaments we have been actually as a committee, there has been a tendency of the cabinet secretaries failing to honor someone's and failing to respond to matters comprehensively without doing any research, what have you, and in timely manner. In your role, how will you ensure that the cabinet secretaries actually attend the committees and sometimes come uh, to parliament? Because we've had these cases where you, you someone and they, a cabinet secretary sent somebody else, maybe a junior fellow, and can't even answer comprehensively the questions that you're supposed to be. So you, are you going to ensure that that is done properly? Secondly, the speaker, I want to ask a question that is important in agriculture. We've had cases where, and now we have this drought, and irrigation is misplaced. Instead of being in agriculture, it's misplaced exactly in tourism. It's under blue, blue economy. So um, are you able to assist to bring irrigation back to agriculture so they can be able to do some of the projects like Kalana Kulalu and the rest? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I wish to ask the nominee, how does he want to cultivate a relationship and a good working relationship between institutions that oversight the government, e.g. Parliament and the Office of the Auditor General with his office and being the Prime Cabinet Secretary together with his cabinet? Thank you. Okay, Thank you, uh, Speaker. Pengine nulize ndugu yetu wikili kumdavadi swali kwa kiswahili. Unajua silekari ambayo iliondoka ilikuwa kona agenda nene ambazo zilikuwa nzuri sana. Lakini haikuweza kutimiza yale maneno ambayo ilikuwa. So, serikali ya Kenya kwanza iku na mambo matano ambaye italete na Kenya wakawaida ambaye umesema na unampata pale railways anakutazamia wewe uh, katika ile position umepatiwa kuweza kuadimika kwa mambo ya ukulima mambo ya uh, the micro small and medium enterprises mambo ya uh, nyumba na nyumba tu si nyumba ya kulipizwa ni ile nyumba ya mugi ambayo mkenya ataweza kupata shelter uh, pengine mambo ya healthcare uh, na hii mambo mengine creative economy wewe katika uh, ile nyafu umepatiwa ni njia gani utaweka mikakati kuone, kuonyesha mambo haya yatatimika na mkenya asiwe tena atakuwa ni mambo ya kungoja kama ile the big four agenda ambayo iliwekwa na serikali iliyopita na ikuweza kutimiza asante yes honorable mdavadi the clock is ticking you can quickly answer those questions okay thank you mr chairman i'll start with the uh, uh, the issue about ambition. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, there's a, 
Shakespeare and in his book Macbeth he made reference to uh, how you should manage your ambition. He called it vaulting ambition. If you can have vaulting ambition and you're not careful, as you try to jump onto the horse, you will land on the other side uh, of the horse. So I am a very pragmatic person. Uh, I am ambitious. Uh, that is why I'm sitting here. Uh, I am ambitious. But it is also important that we manage our ambition uh, as, we, as, we, as we go forward. Uh, that is absolutely critical. And uh, I would like to say that if I'm strong and I'm capable I'm an, and I'm in good health, I think I should bring my experience in public life uh, to bear for the people of Kenya to benefit from it. And uh, that is why um, I'm, I'm sitting before this committee uh, to, to, to present myself in that manner. Um, I just want to say that any cabinet secretary that will be avoiding summons of parliament will be doing so at their own peril. Because parliament is so essential, uh, it's so important, um, and it is absolutely necessary uh, that we develop a respectable and collaborative approach where, when working uh, with Parliament. I've been in Parliament myself. Um, some of you may be sitting exactly where I'm sitting in a few years' time, uh, going through this process. And, and to me, we must cultivate a culture of respecting institutions that have been provided for in the Constitution. That is the hallmark of a good nation. So my view is that uh, uh, I will not hesitate uh, to encourage um, members of cabinet at all times to make sure that they respect the summons of parliament and work very closely uh, with, uh, with uh, parliament. In fact, perhaps I can also take this uh, uh, opportunity to, to, to say, uh, to appeal to the broader parliament through this committee that uh, perhaps um, as we amended, as we go to our 2010 constitution, there was one very critical thing that uh, we may have done in haste in those days, but perhaps through the appeal made by the president, and I enjoin myself on that appeal, that it may be useful that perhaps you can reflect on the standing orders uh, to, to bring in even greater accountability uh, from the executive uh, on how they conduct uh, their activities so that the issues of policy and whatever can be answered uh, ana kwa ana uh, by some of these uh, uh, people uh, if, 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 if need be. Uh, so that is something that may be looked at. Uh, I would also uh, just want to say that it, it may be also very useful, um, unless I'm mistaken, Mr. Chairman, but I was trying to look at what, why have, have we been seeing cases where legislation is collapsing a lot in court? Um, and one of the things that has become a waterloo for many pieces of legislation is the issue of public participation. Um, it is a provision in the Constitution, but I would want to appeal to Parliament uh, to give it more thought uh, so that we can refine that area um, and figure out what is really public participation, what is adequate, what should be the parameters? Because it's still vague. We are going by court rulings, largely on this matter. I think some help uh, from Parliament to refine this area might be very, very uh, useful uh, so that we can avoid too many delays of critical pieces of legislation uh, as we go forward. Uh, I agree.